David Attenborough. Hidden from our view, there's a different world. Creatures utterly unlike us. Creatures utterly unlike us. I think I've got it. Here lies a workshop full of dust and dangerous things, such as dust. Here lies a camera unprotected against these dangerous things, such as dust. Here lies a piece of pine. Pine and camera makes Pamra. Today we will see the very nature of Pamra and how it can overcome the dangerous dust of the workshop. That didn't sound anything like David Attenborough, did it? Like you watch David Attenborough and they have like hidden cameras, they have like a, a rock cam, a log cam, dung cam, who knows what else bloomin' cam. I got a couple DSLRs which I chuck in the workshop and they just get, they get riddled with dust and, and rubbish and everything. My inspiration from David Attenborough is make a box to sit the DSLR in. A protective box. My DSLR sits in, I set up all the settings, I get it rolling, I just pop the lid on, and then out the front I just cut a hole just for the lens to stick out. So the only thing exposed is the lens. The rest of the camera is protected. So this is the beginning of shed cam, or you could call it box cam. I think it's box cam because it's an actual box. Shed box cam, box shed cam, shocks cam, bod cam, bed cam. What the heck? I'm um, box cam. To make this box for the cam, you will need timber. I just had some pine lying around, and I'm kind of, a, I don't like particle board or chip board. I, li I like the real stuff. Cordless tools, or corded, as long as it can drill holes and screw screws. You can cut the timber by hand. I've got my miter helpful mighty saw, my mighty miter saw. <laughs> First thing, figure out the size of your box. That looks to be a good distance when the camera's pushed up to the front of the box. There's a good amount of space at the back for me to just dip my hand in and do some minor adjustments and press the appropriate buttons. And then just a matter of working out a good measurement in the other direction. For the lid, it's a little bit. I happen to have a, a cordless plane, and I've basically just taken the edges off all the way around. But now it doesn't slip off the top because it actually sits down in. So if you don't have a planer, find another method, find another way to do it. There's other ways to do it. You don't even have to do it. What you could do is screw some timber on the actual side here, and that timber actually sits down in, and that stops the front. There's, there's other ways of doing it. I've done it this way. This is box cam as complete as I can get it today. There's a few more adjustments I need to make. I'll have a piece of foam in the bottom so the camera sits nicely on a soft surface. Your camera sits in the box. The lid goes on top. This window is cut much larger than the lens itself. What I'll need to do is source a piece of rubber and the rubber will sit on the front and cover this window. But I'll cut a hole in the piece of rubber so it very tightly fits around the outside of this lens. So when I push the camera in and the lens, the tip of the lens just through the rubber, 
that it creates like a seal and stops dirt and rubbish going in. I'll also look at a mount on the bottom so I can possibly mount it on a tripod or a stand. But at the moment, this can easily sit on the bench and me work over here. Box cam will be especially important for the upcoming films I'll be doing in my small studio here. It's a confined space, there'll be dust, there'll be sparks going everywhere in here and there's every chance all that rubbish is gonna get in my camera. I'm very confident that box cam will be the solution to this problem. Hope you enjoyed that. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down here. Tune in next episode for more funness. And at some stage, I will be finishing off box cam and I will show you the completo, the finished o, the, the of it working. Box cam in action. Yeah.